welcome back guys we are talking about the excretion system in human body and we have talked about uh, the different functions and different regions of nephron and their overview of the functions now in this video we will be talking about how they, they, they achieve their four tasks that is purification or filtration of the blood then uh, reabsorption of nutrients from the blood then concentrating the urine and then finally collecting the urine right so let's begin with the task so the first task is to filter out the blood and filter the toxic materials out of the blood and how it's being done that particular task is actually achieved in this case by glomerulus and that is present the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule all together and this is called corpuscle altogether so corpuscle does the most important part here that is uh, the first important part and uh, that is the selecting out those toxic materials from the blood so how it's done so you can see blood vessel is there so blood is coming blood is coming from this direction blood is coming from this direction and remind you that uh, what I've drawn here this 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 particular uh, ascending uh, blood vessel and this is the descending one so this blood vessel actually this blood vessel is slightly thicker but this blood vessel is slightly thinner in the diameter and there is an importance for that why because when same amount or same volume of liquid material is passing through a pipe now if you are having a, a thick, thicker pipe thicker means uh, a pipe which is having much more diameter the pressure will be less but if you are having a pipe with small diameter, the pressure will be more. So what we are creating here, from low pressure to we are more pressure. So more pressure is being made, is being built inside this glomerulus. More and more pressure is built because we are changing the diameter of the blood vessel that is going in. So as it is doing that, and along with that, these blood vessels, they are having uh, the blood vessel walls that we see that walls are having specialized purpose they are having pore in it so pores are there and not only pores and they are having a membrane outside that membrane that is present outside is having slit in it so the structure is slightly different and it is remind you this is designed for doing something and this this important task here is to take up the toxic materials from the blood so it it looks something like this so the blood vessel if you look the blood vessel if you look it is having pores in it like that and uh, and it is having a cover outside and the cover that we can see outside here like this this cover of different cells and they are having also slits in it so through these slits and pores the nutrient materials uh, not uh, not not nutrients but those toxic materials those those solutes that that we need to take out from the blood those small solutes and water is coming out so what is coming out from here uh, solutes are coming out these are toxic obviously we don't require them uh, some toxic solutes along with that water is coming out because water is permeable through the pores because water can pass through anything like that and it and, and these are the desired uh, water is not that water is also a little bit desired but some undesired materials are also coming out that is ions like sodium like chlorine like potassium so these ions are also coming out and along with that vitamin sometimes coming out uh, and also uh, glucose sometimes coming out so these things are important we don't want these things end up in your urine right glucose in urine we don't want this right so these are unwanted things. but still uh, due to this process this is not that much selective some pores are there so many things can come out uh, both toxic as non-toxic right both required and unrequired materials so from here one thing is fine that we, we filter out the toxic material, blood is filtered and through this afferent uh, tubule, uh, afferent vessel when the blood is going out, it is filtered, filtered, filtered blood is going out from that side, right? So no problem, no doubt about that and those materials that are just coming out, those materials are entering into the Bowman's capsule. And Bauman's capsules are also having a channel you can see here. So through this part, the, those materials are coming in. So among those materials, we are having water, we are having sodium, some ions like sodium and chlorine. We are having, we are sometimes having glucose, we are having uh, vitamins in some cases. So these things, all of these things are coming out, all of these things, some important, some non-important and also toxic materials are also there, that's the actual point. 
so once they're entering into the Bowman's capsule so this is the first part of our nephron to function that is filtering the blood out and they have done it but not in a master way not in a specialized regulated way just random now after this task is accomplished the second task is obviously remains there that we need to take out the important materials the important nutrients that just came from the glomerulus shouldn't be ended up in our urine so we need to resend them back to our blood right so that is the important task and that is called the reabsorption of nutrients and that particular task is fulfilled by proximal tubule here so proximal tubule is there so through when when the, this particular uh, uh, what we can say uh, filtered material or filtrate is passing through proximal tubule what is going on in proximal tubule there are cells now those cells what what the cells they are also specialized in some way how so let me draw here the function of the proximal tubule a little bit here so in, in proximal tubule the cells that we can see they are having microvilli in their surface now we know why microvilli is there because microvilli are there to specialize structure to increase the surface area of the cells so they can absorb more materials inside so they are designed for absorption and here in between we are having blood vessel now I haven't drawn in this picture to will not make it more complicated that this this whole part this whole part of proximal tubule Henle's loop distal tubule and everything is just just coiled by blood vessels they are just blood vessels everywhere why because these are permeable this this members this this tubes are permeable so through these tubes nutrients will come out through these tubes sodium ions will come out through this tube water will come out and they need to go somewhere and the, the place they need to go is blood because that's the place they should be so blood vessels are there so that whatever nutrients is just resent back it should come and uh, be end in the blood so that is why it's important so I haven't drawn it but everywhere this every per, every region is just filled with blood vessels so here we see a blood vessel near this proximal tubule cells and if this is a proximal tubule uh, epithelial cell now what we can see these cells what they are doing they are kind of creating a sodium gradient now why it is that they are transferring sodium ion they are transferring sodium ion out of the cell using energy of ATP using energy of ATP they are transferring sodium ions outside the cell in, in, in this intracellular space and as a result of that there is less sodium inside the cell but there are more sodium outside the cell because this is the section where all of these materials ends up with because here this section means this and this this wall means the cells like this so as you can see and outside the wall the, there is blood vessel so if I draw the blood vessel like this outside the wall the blood vessel and the blood vessel is like this right so try to understand the concept very much so this is the lumen and this is a section where a lot of sodium end up with because sodium is just coming from the blood so sodium is there water is there outside we we need this sodium and water to filter out right because we need to reabsorb these materials how to reabsorb them you can see that these cells are prepared to take up sodium because they are creating a sodium gradient by sending whatever sodium inside the cell is outside the cell so now inside the cell there is less sodium but outside the cell there is more sodium so sodium will follow down the concentration gradient and the sodium will simply end up with inside the cell but sodium cannot enter directly by normal diffusion and we know that sodium requires some kind of proteins or channels to pass through so sodium in this case uses particular type of channel and that channel is sodium channel but they use core transport for this process so they use a core transport core transport and sodium transported inside the cell along with sometimes glucose or along with sometimes vitamin so as you can see not only by this process they uptake sodium inside the cell but they also take glucose and vitamins inside the cell so that is the process inside this proximal tubule cells they are ready for doing this ready for uptaking sodium ready for uptaking glucose and vitamins whatever is ended there and then they will send everything they will send this sodium glucose vitamin everything to this blood vessel and then blood will carry these materials again so this is called reabsorption 
reabsorption of necessary nutrients in our blood and that is carried out by proximal tubule in there's the first kind of section of our nephron right this is the second task guys All right now let's talk about the third important task and that task is to concentrate our urine right and that's the most important task and that is fascinating too and that particular task is carried out by Henley's loop that we can see here so I'm, I'm telling you that the, the picture that I've drawn is not particularly correct because Henley loops are actually much more longer, much more longer there. It, it down down the uh, medulla, it, it placed in several layers deep. But still, I don't have that much of big board to draw it, so that's why I draw in small. But it's actually they are large and larger. And this this is the section which varies from the different animals we can see in the animals placed in desert have larger and longer Henley loop the animals placed in other regions and normal regions where adequate amount of water is there tropical regions or uh, tropical forest animals those are having a type of same type of uh, smaller uh, uh, Henley's loop okay now what is going on in the Henley's loop here this Henley's loop is again creating a concentration gradient it's creating concentration gradient so that there is less water remaining and more electrolytes and more toxic materials are dissolved in it that's the way to make it concentrated if there is more water then mean less concentrated less water it's more concentrated and in this case it, it make try it, it is trying to make it more concentrated by taking up more water by abs getting more water and by dissolving more uh, electrolytes and other particles in water right so what is going on here as you can see this Henley's loop is divided into three sections one is the ascending loop this is sorry this is the descending loop so first is the descending loop then the ascending loop then slightly thicker ascending loop region so these are the three descending and ascending loop region right so descending this is ascending and this this is the middle portion is the u-shaped region so what is going on these three sections are placed perfectly in this orientation and I remind you that this particular structure of U is the key to do this concentration gradient there because if this is a straight pipe like this it never ever it is not possible for Henley's loop to make the concentration gradient so this shape of U is really really important in this nephron structure so what we can see that from the beginning there is this this first this first type of lining these cells are water permeable they are permeable to water they are more permeable to water and they are very very less permeable to electrolytes like sodium potassium chlorine these things and this ascending tubule are more permeable to electrolytes but less permeable to water and that is another vital concept here so let me write it here more permeable to water so more water can pass out more water can come out through these sections through this descending Henley's loop region more water is coming out but very less electrolytes are coming out so what we are doing here we are taking more of the water so we are making the region hypertonic making the solution hypertonic that means less solute uh, more solute is there less solvent is there so that's what we are making here right so solvent water is taking out so more solute is there so it's the, the the medium that is inside is hypertonic now the concentration is little bit higher now now once it is reaching this u-shaped region this is the term this is the place this u-shaped portion here it's kind of fixed is off everything is very slow it's not moving at all now now remind you the direction of urine flow in this descending loop is this bottom now in U shaped region it is kind of parallel like this after that in the ascending loop it will just migrate in the top region in the up up region right so what is going on here but in this section in this ascending loop it requires and it takes out more electrolytes out less water so what is doing in this case in this case they, it is now once in this u-shaped region this is a section where this urine really is it's really really concentrated because water is taking out now in this section oh, sodium so so everything is just taking out is 
so the water is hypertonic remind you but here once it reaches once it reaches this ascending loop in this particular section the cells that are present in the ascending loop that cells are not hypertonic they are hypotonic to it so what will be going on so in this particular section the solutes will be taken outside the solutes that means those electrolytes the sodium chlorine and those electrolytes will be taken will be reabsorbed through this ascending region of the henle's loop and they are reabsorbed outside so let me draw the reabsorption so from this section sodium will be taken out lots of lots of sodium will be taken out right lots of other electrolytes and very few amount of urea will be taken out so small amount of urea and sodium they are taken out so what we are doing here they are now rebuilding the concentration so now previously it is much more concentrated now after again taking up this electrolytes the concentration is like kind of balanced but now once it reaches this this kind of kind of fat region there kind of fat region here in the tube at that particular area large area is there so again the pressure drops and this particular section is important to keep this process forward in this direction why because you mind you if it is continuously making is concentrated like this way then never uh, so as it is concentrated here and less concentrated here according to our uh, theory of uh, osmosis and other process what will happen that in this process water must not be end up with this section so they will always make it jam and this pipe will fail so to not make it fail what is doing in this case they make it fat they make this top region fat this upper section fat so as it is making the upper region fat it is an advantage that yes it is making a positive feedback loop and the very beginning it is taking out water making it hypertonic then again taking it away making it hypotonic then again in this case so uh, making it isotonic at this particular place but again when once coming into the fat region it's making it hypotonic so as it is hypotonic in nature once the feedback is ended here hypotonic condition then obviously obviously materials will flow from this to this hypotonic region so again the concentration gradient start to build so this particular section is important to keep this positive feedback loop going again and again and again throughout this region right and those particular animals which are living in the desert region we, which do not have that much water to eat and water to drink in that condition this henle's loop might might be long because they need to take up more water out because if they excrete urine of dilute concentrations then they are not going to survive those people who who are obviously you know when you are dehydrated your urine is concentrated because that's your body's defense mechanism your body never want water to lose from your body right so as less water is given for for the urination that's the concept of the body so it's it's kind of done here at this particular point so things are coming out like that and at this particular point uh, once it is reaching into much more thicker region which is the distal tubule here now uh, the last task and again distal tubule task is to reab reabsorption of water and ions right but remind you this is having a specialized function because it is under under the control of hormones right so here the distal tubule is under the control of hormones and the hormone here controls one is aldosterone another hormone is anti diuretic hormone or adh both of them are working properly for this situation now what we can see here aldosterone is a hormone which regulates when to take out sodium when not to take out sodium let's say in our body in our blood stream we are having very less amount of sodium now in that condition aldosterone will come and aldosterone will tell this distal tubule that we are having less amount of sodium in blood so take out sodium from this so they will start to take sodium out upon the signaling of aldosterone so aldosterone here plays a vital role in this case aldosterone control of reabsorption of sodium is mediated by aldosterone now another thing the absorption of water and that thing is controlled by another hormone called anti diuretic hormone or adh now this anti diuretic hormone or adh is also important now this hormone is regularly kind of secreting and it is regulating this particular task now what is the job of adh let's say so let me draw here for for you the, the particular process that is performed here and adh is doing the task 
that normally let's say you are having in your blood in your blood everything is measured with blood because in your blood there is less water present in your body there is in your body there is less water present in your cells there is less water present in that condition aldosterone not aldosterone adh hormone will be secreted and what adh will do adh once binding with this receptor that are present here there are receptors hormonal receptors present there once adh is present there the adh will tell this particular section of distal tubule to not not take water out sorry to so to take water out to take water out of this urine because your blood your your body is getting out of water so you don't have water in your body cells why should you devote that water in urine make urine more concentrated and give the water to body give the water to blood come back to blood so that's what is tell, uh, told by adh there so take water out of the situation if body and blood water level is very low now what happens in diabetes insipidus now in that kind of diabetes the people that are there so normally the people uh, there they are uh, having trouble in producing this adh so there is no adh either sometimes or sometimes there is very less amount of adh present in their body so what is happening there as there is less amount of adh present so there is no controlling in this water reabsorption so always their urine is is ready to take out more water so reabsorption of water is not possible for them so that's why they end up with more diluted urine because lots of water in there less electrolytes are there so it's diluted urine for all the time because they don't have this adh activated much in their body in their blood so that's the important point here and also during dehydration this anti diuretic hormone plays a vital role because when you are dehydrated this anti diuretic hormone th that's what i've told you in, when the blood is uh, water is less in blood and body that means this condition is a dehydration condition dehydration obviously in this dehydrated condition result to taking the stars taking out water from the urine so that's why remember you can find it that once you are going uh, in in the morning uh, the first urination that that's going on that is much more di much more concentrated of yours that's why lots of tests regarding urine enzymatic tests and all these tests must be performed in the first urine that you uh, release uh, after after a night sleep because the night sleep is a pretty long time and you, you won't drink much water during the night sleep there is 6 to 8 hours of sleep and no water yet so that duration of time less water in the body so the urine is much more concentrated at that time right so less water in the body more concentrated urine mediated by anti diuretic hormone or adh there right and reabsorption of sodium is brought about by aldosterone there so this is kind of it guys there are more hormones more regulations but i'm not going to talk about those details this is just for understanding how that this task and how fascinating our nephron is and how fascinatedly they are doing their task that's why i'm doing this and that's fine and the final task remains and that is collecting the urine though the task is uh, not that much uh, difficult here but it's important too because you need to collect everything in a uh, in a chamber then you need to deliver it outside so here what we can see this is a collecting chamber this collecting tubule or collecting duct yeah, through this collecting duct all of this uh, all of these materials that are there these those things are moved inside so here everything is just taken out so no reabsorption is going on here slightly reabsorption in the beginning but no reabsorption here so this is urine this is simply concentrated form of whatever is going on from the beginning of the filtering of blood but this is concentrated material of toxic material this is urine urea is there and it, is, it will come and finally it will come and end up with your uh, ureter then finally uh, it will come out right so this is the whole process of how your excretory system is working how the nephron is doing this complicated task on its own as you can see all of these tasks are performed by nephron so it's a fascinating organ guys and i love nephron and how it's functioning and it's very it's doing a vital way of uh, of your dialysis in your body and that's important not only uh, for uh, for excreting out toxic material but it's a very very vital job right and it's obviously important for maintaining the homeostasis inside your body to maintain the blood uh, water level the body water level inside your body 
so this is really important and one important message to all of you drink lot and lots of water guys it is necessary to keep your nephron healthy functioning the task it is performing to keep your kidney healthy functioning the task right so drink lots of water and be safe be healthy that's it thank you